We'll go back to our breaking news. We take you to Atlanta, where, as you can see, live from the pictures, the court is back in session. Senator and Sarah Murray is there uh, with us. Sarah, what are you hearing? That's right. I mean, what we're seeing essentially is the assembling of everyone that you need in order to move this indictment through the process it needs to go through. Again, we are waiting to see what this grand jury may have provided, but we know that the judge is back on the bench, that court is back in session, and we are essentially waiting to see what the grand jury has to hand off to the judge. We also know that the clerk is in the clerk's office. Again, here is how this works. Whatever the grand jury decided to do today, whatever the grand jury handed up, it gets handed up. It gets walked into the presiding judge's courtroom, which is Judge Robert McBurney this week. He needs to sign off on any potential indictments, and then those indictments need to be walked into the court clerk's office where they can be stamped, where they can be processed. So as we are seeing these folks assemble, we're seeing the judge take the bench, we're seeing the clerk show up in the clerk's office. What we are essentially seeing is everyone going to the places that they need to be in order to process a potential indictment while we await word of what the grand jury has actually handed up, guys. So, sir, just in terms of what we are literally seeing on the screen, Let's be clear. This is the room where the grand is this the room where the grand jury was meeting, and that's the audience in in that room. We're obviously not seeing the grand jury where they're not showing the judge. That's just the uh, reporters, people who have been sitting there waiting for word. Correct. Right. I can't see that. I can't see the room that you're looking at right now, Anderson, because I'm looking into a camera. But I think what you're looking at is probably Judge Robert McBurney's courtroom. Reporters are not allowed into the room, you know, where the grand jury normally con uh, okay. convenes, where they have been hearing from witnesses all day. But reporters have been sitting in Judge Robert McBurney's courtroom all day, waiting for any word that the grand jury is wrapping up, waiting for any word that the grand jury has any findings that they are prepared to hand up to this presiding judge today. Anderson. And then, so what will we hear from this room? We will hear from the judge himself? Yeah, it's sort of up to every presiding judge of how they want to handle these things. You know, some judges, when they're in this position, just get a stack of papers, they sign it, they hand it back to an official from the clerk's office, and they don't say anything about it. We're waiting to see if Judge Robert McBurney uh, is actually going to, to say anything, presumably when he gets handed whatever is provided to him from the grand jury today. Again, the presiding judge has a lot of leeway to sort of decide what he wants to say in this situation. And we're waiting to see if Judge Robert. It McCurney looks like the clerk is receiving paperwork now, uh, Sarah. Uh, uh, Ellie uh, Honig. Yes, I'm seeing. Our legal analyst yes. Ellie Honig is also joining us. Ellie, what are we? What are we watching now? Yeah, Anderson. So the stage is set here. These appear to be the final stages. So what ordinarily would happen is the prosecutor who's been handling the grand jury proceedings after the grand jury has voted, assuming they have voted yes on an indictment, would then walk the foreperson over to the clerk's window, and we just saw someone signing some paperwork at a sort of translucent window, and then to the judge. And as Sarah said, different judges handle this part of the mechanics differently. Some judges will do it in open court. The grand jury foreperson will literally hand up the indictment. That's why we use the phrase, hand up an indictment. The judge will review them quickly. There's no substantive review. It's just a formality. And then sometimes the judge will announce the case names and numbers. Other times that will happen behind closed doors in chambers. And the way we would then find out is when these documents hit the public docket, which would be nearly instantaneously. So it does look like there's some security moving through this area here. Uh, we don't know exactly who the people are. But again, you would take the four person as a prosecutor, walk with that four person to the clerk and then to the judge where the final sort of stamping would be happening. So it seems like that would be the clerk that was just visited and they are now going toward the judge. Could is well that, be. Is that a safe assumption? Could well be. And again, sometimes the judge will do this in front of the public in the courtroom. Usually it's no big deal. The person just walks up and the cases don't really mean much of anything to anybody. Sometimes the judge can choose to do this behind closed doors in chambers. It's really up to the judge to do that. And I think the courtroom that we're looking at here, you are correct, Sarah is correct. This is not the grand jury room. You would never have a camera inside a grand jury room. That's never happened. I don't think that will happen. This does appear to be a courtroom where the, the crowd, the media assembled there, does a, a, seem to be expecting some sort of an announcement by the judge. And the judge could well do that and come out and say, right. we've returned the following indictments today, case number such and such, state of Georgia versus whoever.
Also, former uh, Georgia federal judge Michael Moore uh, is with us. Uh, judge Moore, I'm wondering, what do you expect to now happen? Well, at this stage of the proceedings, there's nothing unusual about the grand jury uh, four person coming in with the prosecutor. Uh, and, and, and Georgia indictments are to be presented in open court. And that is the courthouse is to be open, the courtrooms to be open. The judge uh, will, will have the bench. And uh, at that point, uh, there'll be a clerk present. And then sometimes there's a discussion with the judge and the four person. You know, is this the indictment handed up? They'll flip through the pages to make sure that the, it's signed in the proper places. Those things, the indictment will be received and returned in open court. So that's what it sounds like is happening here. Um, and, um, you know, the next step, obviously, he, the judge will accept it. Be, the indictment will be given to the clerk and filed on the public docket. And at that point, you know, we're off to the races. This, it sounds to me like this cake is well baked. Uh, and uh, it's just a matter of time before yeah. we see indictment. And, and I imagine we'll see it. It'll be interesting to see if it, it, it tracks the charges uh, from the earlier posting that we talked about in the earlier session. And, and Michael, I think I referred to you as a former federal judge. I apologize, you were a former U.S. attorney. Uh, uh, so. that, that, look, I apologize to my judge friends who, who may have uh, so, thought I was uh, okay, so, encroaching. So Michael, this I, this is the, the indictment being handed to the judge, correct? I can't see it, but that is likely what is happening. Yeah, if you if the if the clerk is there, the the prosecutor is there, the judge is on the bench, then and the papers are going up, then I would uh, gather that's the indictment being being handed up. Uh, do we have sound in this room? Can we listen in? Let's listen in. Madam. Mr. Royals, everything went as it should have in front of the grand jury? Yes, sir. All right. Ms. Alexander, you're prepared to take this? I guess I'm delivering it to the clerk. You'll maintain custody of it from here? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Can you take the certification or does it go with Madam Clerk? All right. Thank, Thank you all. Much. Yes, you too. All right, you guys, make way.